The way I heard it was like this. Hero is playing Legacy at some SCG event. Villain's board is two lands and three polluted deltas, with a dark confidant in play. Villain also basically has a grip full of cards, some number of which are presumably counterspells and force of wills. Hero draws his card, then tanks for a bit. He calls the judge over. He points to a card in his hand and asks, I can name Dark Confidant with this, right? The judge confirms that he can. Hero casts Pithing Needle. Villain allows it to resolve. Hero names Polluted Delta. Alright, so that anecdote is the perfect reason to love bluffing and magic. It also sets the scene for one of the game's most narrow and effective designs, and a card with a great history of corner case bad beat stories, Pithing Needle. Today I'm going to sing an ode to what may be my favorite one-drop artifact, and posit that its presence in standard is both always welcome and long overdue. Let's start by clearing up any confusion. That first word is pronounced pithing, and it comes from the real-world medical procedure of piercing the spinal cord in an animal as to experiment on its living tissue. Pithing will either paralyze or euthanize animals, and if you're sickly curious, there's a million videos on YouTube of medical students pithing frogs for practice. The cattle industry used pithing as a means for extermination until it was banned in the UK in 2001 as a cause for the spread of mad cow disease. Somebody should have told old Anton Chigurh here that what he was doing was actually illegal. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Pithing, as you can see in both the Pete Venters and Anthony Palumbo versions of this card, is different from a lobotomy. The latter used ice picks to mush up brain matter in the frontal lobe, and provided much of the dramatic tension in Ken Casey's 1962 novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and the 2010 DiCaprio thriller Shutter Island. Here, however, the focus is on the nape. Palumbo gets at this idea well. The small shaved patch above the victim's neck hints at the looming procedure. I tell you all this to clear up any confusion about the card's pronunciation. Pithing is a real thing, and has nothing to do with pie. Confusion also surrounds this card's ability, which has led to controversy and a myriad of learning moments for Magic players over the years. New players struggle with the needle. It's a tall order to know exactly what qualifies as an activated ability when you're just starting out with the game. We can take a great example from the last time Pithing Needle was legal and standard. Return to Ravnica and Theros blocks composed the format. It was an era dominated by mono black decks running Underworld Connections as their main source of card advantage. Lesser experienced players fumbled and named Underworld Connections when wielding needles. The problem is, the aura gives the ability to the land it's enchanting, and not the enchantment itself, which permitted their opponents to still draw cards. More savvy players knew to name Swamp. Not only would that stop the card draw engine, but it would force mono black players to drop their future connections on mutavolts, effectively taking out two of their threats with one card. However, Pithing Needle subtly doesn't hit mana abilities, which still gives players headaches. Elvish Mystic gets through the needle, but Arbor Elf doesn't. Aetherling gets hit by the needle even though its abilities require mana, and a blood rushed Gore Clan Rampager falls victim too, even though it never actually hits the battlefield. Players new to Legacy often forget that Lion's Eye Diamond is a mana ability, leading to some embarrassing moments for even experienced players. Maybe the most famous bad beat story thus far involves Pithing Needle and the angry Cyclops of the Gruul Clan. It was January 2016 at a modern event in Charlotte hosted by Star City Games. Bradley Carpenter down one game to Agorio's Vengeance deck piloted by Bob Huang, plays a turn one needle and names Gristlebrand the deck's main win condition. A few turns later, Carpenter plays another needle, this time naming Borborygmus, the secondary win con. Of course, Borborygmus enraged is the actual card name. Yeah, so it sounds like he just named Borborygmus, not Borborygmus enraged. Since the version without the epithet is a legal card name, Huang doesn't correct Carpenter. Soon thereafter, Huang dumps his hand of lands to Borborygmus enraged's activated ability, capitalizing on the hiccup, and killing Carpenter in the process. This caused a controversy regarding rules lawyering. The majority of players argued in favor of Carpenter. Both players understood his intentions, and this corner case situation could only happen because of the naming formats of the legendary creature. Matt Sperling, on the other hand, took Bob's side and posited that your opponent is not responsible for remembering the game rules for you. What's trickiest about this situation is the rules regarding naming. Technically speaking, you can name any card with Pithing Needle, but that doesn't mean it will have its desired effect. 
Longtime vets of MTGO know this all too well and have named Pithing Needle with Pithing Needle by accident. Oh my. <laughs> oh, you didn't just see that. You didn't see that. Ultimately, Carpenter's mistake was a verbal one, and not one of strict gameplay. Even though his intentions were clear, there was no negotiation of meaning between the players. Probably due to this debacle, Wizards updated the rules in April of 2017 with Section 3.6 on card identification and interpretation. It states that both players are responsible for clearing up ambiguity, and that a name isn't necessary as long as there's a single card that everyone is on the same page about. Players that have been punished by naming Shackles, as shorthand for Vidalcan Shackles, are likely happy to see this, too. Regardless, all these bad beats make way for great learning opportunities. Magic is a complex game, and Pithing Needle opens the way to make players better, even if the way presents itself as Spartan at times. After all, where Pithing Needle thrives is precisely in the corner case scenario, which leads me to my final point. It's been a few years since the card is seen play in Standard, and I'm not alone in thinking that it's time for its triumphant return to the limelight. Pros of the game have been echoing this sentiment since the domination of Gideon, Vehicles, and the copycat combo. Pithing Needle answers all of these threats. We were teased at a reprint with the Aether Revolt masterpieces, but as of Amonkhet, there are no needles on the horizon. I see Pithing Needle as one of the most elegant answer pieces in the game, it's the perfect sideboard card that responds to threats with precision. Against aggro and creature-based decks, it does virtually nothing, but it can keep mid-range and control strategies in check. It allows wizards to lay off banning as a means to hose haymakers, and promotes a healthier ecosystem reliant on sideboard strategy to win games. The card can also be adapted to any story-driven environment, and given that it's an artifact, it can be played in any deck. In essence, Pithing Needle is a skill-intensive card that rewards knowledge of the game and archetypes of the format to carve out incremental advantage. And, for lack of a better pun, it can just get in your opponent's head. Was my heart giving him some information there? <laughs> just remember to enunciate your card names, and if given the window, always go for that polluted Delta Gold. Thanks for watching. Great news for everyone involved. I'm doing a giveaway sponsored by my patrons. I am giving away this masterpiece pithing needle. Looks super, super good in person, I must say. Um, all you have to do is be a patron to participate. So if you sign up for my Patreon at the dollar level, you'll get a bunch of perks and you'll be entered to win this. I will be giving it away um, in time for my next video. So check out for that. Also shout out to my highest tier patrons, you'll see them highlighted in the credits. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed Pithing Needle, let me know in the comments below your best bad beat story with Pithing Needle wielding that needle. Ooh, this card is so good, I just like it a lot. Anyway, yeah, I like to keep this short and sweet, this is where I promote my Patreon page, it really really helps, I have a couple new goals, I'd like to hit 150 patrons by the end of next month, so, you know, do your part. And every dollar helps, of course, helps me keep creating, and it helps my well-being. It also helps future giveaways like this one here. So again, thanks for supporting. I'll see you guys in two weeks. Cheers.